Good evening, Cameron. Hey, how are you? I'm fantastic. Living the dream one day at a time, my friend. Good. Good to hear. Sorry we're a little bit late. Uh, to everyone was ex that it was expected us at 8.30. Uh, unfortunately, our workshop for Muskie's Odyssey went a little bit later than I had anticipated. Uh, but needless to say, we are here. Camera angles are all set up. Uh, we've got good audio, good visual, and we're going to learn a lot about knives tonight. Cameron, tell us. I mean, I, I couldn't even begin to, to put names to any of the knives that are before us here right now. But uh, what is the extent... Uh, of nice knife selection that we're going to be talking about. Is this strictly for, uh, you know, dressing meat, filleting fish? Um, tell us a little bit about the knives before us. All the above. There you go. So, wow. I hit that so one. I, I've got uh, a plethora of knives here. And at, not, at work, I've got, you know, about, I, I'm not kidding, you know, 30 knives there. I've got... You know, about a dozen knives here, a dozen knives here. And so, yeah, this is my thing. And, and you know, being a chef, you know, for um, apparently 35 years and sharpening, you know, really for around 30 of them. Uh, we talked a little bit before about how I learned how to sharpen. Uh, and it's sort of an artisan style, a Japanese uh, style that was... Um, that I was taught uh, the this particular way of sharpening knives, and and this is my whole life, you know, cooking and and knives, and yeah, about five years ago I started my own knife sharpening company because there was such demand all the time, and and people are always asking me to sharpen their knives, uh, <clears throat> so I I figured well I might as well make a little bit of money off of it um, um, for more fishing gear and uh you know that other addiction <clears throat> but you have to excuse me i got this sort this uh, frog in my throat today it's not sore throat it's not covid i don't go anywhere to to get covid um <clears throat> but the all these different kinds of knives they have a different purpose and within each knife it has a different type of steel and uh <clears throat> some have a little bit harder uh, steel, some have a little bit softer steel. It's all of really what you pay. And <clears throat> it was funny, I, I just got a message just before we went on um, about this one guy that had his knife sharpened at one place, and it was terrible. So what you know what some people do is they have high speed grinders and sanders. Right. Um, what that does, the thing is. It's very quick. It's very effective for places that are busy and they want to do a very quick product uh, and results, but not necessarily that great you know, in my mind. Um, and really what it is, and some people, uh, the one guy goes on Facebook, he goes, well, anyone can sharpen a knife. And, and I've seen it before. And some people have said, well, I, I thought that I can sharpen my own knife. Uh, I got the grinder from the garage, and I, I kind of, yeah, I think that's okay. And and they just they grind the hell out of it, and they go, oh god, I, I think I just ruined this thing. High speed, high heat, uh, not being accurate. And you, if you think that you're going to sharpen a knife in 30 seconds, you're sadly mistaken. So uh, can it be done? Yeah, of course it can be. Um, and I get this debate, you know, um, when I get when people ask about knife sharpening or auger blade sharpening, and some people will say, "Well, you can do it yourself." And, um, yeah, of course you can, but it depends on what degree you want it done and, and how good you want it done. Um, I'm really, really fussy about a perfect product. Um, I do hundreds of auger blades. I do thousands of, of knives in a year. And everything is either done by, I don't know if you can see down here, by these types of stones. And I have other water stone machines that I use. So there's no heat. Um, <clears throat> it's incredibly accurate. And even if I want it to a half a degree, so if I want it at a 22.5 degree angle, I can do that. 
Um, and some, they don't have any fear of damaged knives, um, but some people, they'll, they'll grind it, you know, here on the edge, and they'll grind it right up the side. And, and just before we went on, a guy sent me a picture and said, I, I need your help. You know, this is what I got from this one guy. And I, I know who he is. And I do a lot of business, actually, from this one gentleman because it's bang, bang on the grinder. Okay, I'm done. And you know, whether it's 20 seconds, you know, or whether it's, you know, maybe 45 seconds. But really, a knife like this, you know, it'll take me around five minutes to do. And that's, you know, um, I do majority of it on my water stone machines. And it's a very slow turning uh, stone. And there's, like I said, there's no heat in there. And it's super accurate. And, you know, uh, I started off my company using everything by stones. How I used to do, you know, as a chef. And I used to sharpen people's knives. Uh, my business got... Um, quite busy very quickly when I started advertising it and uh, I couldn't do it all by hand. So <clears throat> the question people ask me all the time is what kind of stones should I use? One second. Gotcha. Well, just, just before we go any further, um, obviously, as you know, Cameron Tate is the name, the razor's edge is the name of his company. And, and I have to ask Cameron, obviously we all know about your culinary uh, prowess, but uh, what, became the fascination uh when it came to the knives how, like how did you did you fall into that by accident or you just did some research and said hmm i might be able from, to from the knife sharpening point of view yeah you know what you're asking okay let's back it up you know like like 30 plus years you know when i first started off this was my very first knife this was in 1988 i got this knife when i went to culinary school this is a, called a stamped knife. At the time, it was, uh, I think, around $20. Uh, it is a, um, it's a Henkel knife, but it's a stamped knife. Uh, there, there's no forging. There's no nothing to it. Uh, the tang, actually, it'll only go to about here. So the metal piece that goes into the handle. Um, it's easy to sharpen. It's a very soft steel. Uh, it doesn't keep the edge for very long at all. So, this is very first <laughs> so when when I started off as a chef, actually, this was my other, this is my second knife that I got. Fall of 1988. Um, this was the start of my addiction. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't, uh, I don't think I do anything, you know, bad, any bad habits. I, I fish a lot. I have a lot of fishing gear. That's where my money goes. But, um, Knives can be an addiction, you know, and as a chef, every paycheck, I wanted to buy one tool, whether it was a, <clears throat> uh, a pairing, a pairing knife or a vegetable peeler or a chef knife. Uh, I'm, I was always building my, my tools like a carpenter. And I've got a tool chest, you know, like this. And then I've got another tool chest like that. So I've got basically a whole mechanics set of tools and knives uh, for the trade. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of professional kitchens, you are completely on your own, you know, for providing your own uh, knives and equipment. Just like uh, exactly like a mechanic. Makes, and you know what, makes sense. Obviously there's different wrenches for different applications. There's different knives uh, for, for different purposes. And when it comes to knives, you know, the obvious question, uh, is it better to get a knife that is hardened steel or this is the softer the better okay uh, again you get what you pay for so if i have um okay <clears throat> i don't want to be brand specific here i don't care okay so this is a rapala knife uh it is a harder a little bit of a harder steel um it doesn't keep the edge you know very long you know, if you take a look at you know, another boning knife. Oh, let's take one over here. So I'll just show this one's a, a CUDA. And this is a professional series. So it's a um, it's a titanium bonded knife. So this is actually 10 times harder than steel. 
uh, from untreated stainless steel is a hard steel. It's a hard knife. And people always say, uh, for me, when I sharpen a knife, <clears throat> a knife like this, it's $1.50 per inch uh, for me to sharpen. And it's three stages that I do. And this knife would, you know, take me between, you know, five, you know, or eight minutes to sharpen. So if someone goes, well, I can sharpen it, you know, for three bucks, go ahead. <laughs> because it, it will be dull, you know, after chopping one carrot. Gotcha. So these knives uh, here, um, it's, it's a very specific angle based on uh, the type of knife or the type of um, uh, purpose that you're doing it for. Are you filleting? Are you chopping? Are you skinning or whatever? And we can... I'll get off track because I can talk about this for hours, kind of like cooking. So, well, you know, um, and that, you know, it's not such a bad thing. I will say that Cameron, but uh, obviously there's some great questions and comments that are coming up uh, so far. Uh, Tony wants you to grab a, a glass of whiskey to start in order, you know, to perhaps maybe uh, sedate that frog you got in your throat. Uh, but when it comes to sharpening, obviously, you know, Peter DeSouza is mentioning much like it was with my father, you know, we would watch, uh, whether it be our grandfathers or our fathers, you know, sharpen back and forth, back and forth on a rectangular stone like you have in front of you uh, for many minutes. Um, and then, of course, you know, how they would store those knives, whether it would be in a wooden block or, as Peter has mentioned, uh, he would wrap them in a cotton hand cloth and put them away un until they were needed again. So does storing a knife when it's not in use important oh my gosh is it ever um Sandy, can you make that uh, other thing over there so things that are terrible putting them in dishwashers throwing them in a drawer and you're like where's those knives you know and they're banging and crashing around right and and i and like i said i sharpen thousands of knives every year and um i see and i'll say to people when the dishwasher right and the, yeah and I said, you got a, a knife drawer, right, that you throw it in? They're like, yeah, this is perfect. Okay. So that's where, you know, I've got a couple of these, you know, for my knives. And my beautiful wife, she goes to, I think, Ikea or uh, she goes, I don't know. Um, and this is the best, the best thing for these, you know, that it's going to go basically in a horizontal and it's going to stay there and it's, a knife block that you put in is okay as well. Yeah. Um, now, but not putting it in the dishwasher. Sorry, Cameron. Sorry? The concerns about putting uh, a knife in a dishwasher is it because of uh, the concerns you have it, of it banging up against other, um, uh, like forks, spoons, what have you, or is it the dishwasher itself that does damage? Uh, the dishwasher heat will not damage it. The the steel. But if you take a look at these rivets here. And in here, that's where water gets in. That's where you'll ruin a really, really nice knife. You know, this knife here is, you know, that's about a $150 knife. Something like this. This is a Wusthof knife. So this is a German. It's a one piece. It's not going to do any damage in, in the dishwasher because there's nowhere for the water to get in. But how hard is it to just wash a knife in the sink and then put it aside? So... The, the other thing that I really want to talk about is if I could find my most inexpensive knife here. So this one is, uh, yeah, this is a Victoria Knox. So I had a, a Swiss chef when I was going to school. This was the only knife that you should ever have as a chef. Why was it? Because he was Swiss and he thought this was the best thing. Maybe he had shares in it. I, I don't know. This is a good knife. It's a good knife. This is a Henkel knife. It has uh, a hard, a little bit of a harder steel. This is a Canadian Cutlery International, a real workhorse for chefs. It's a German steel. Uh, it's made in Canada. It's a harder steel. This one is a Shun knife. It's an even harder steel. And again, a hard steel is is hard to sharpen. It's it's a difficult knife. This one here, you can move the steel on this one really quick. 
But is it going to stay, you know, sharp for a long period of time? Absolutely not. Now, most of the knives that you picked up, are these considered like chopping knives or what else? What other applications would you use for them? Okay, so this one here is a chef knife. It's a chopping knife. Um, it's a 10 inch. So a lot of, a lot of males uh, prefer, say, a longer knife, like a 10 inch. Um, ladies, females, they like a little bit shorter knife. Something that they can hold on to, you know, really uh, comfortably. And I wrote an article, that's good. I wrote an article for In Fisherman. It was about three years ago. Uh, it was the top five filleting knives. So if you just search Cameron Tate uh, in Fisherman, you'll you'll come up with the article. And for me, it's all about comfort. And uh, I think I've mentioned this before. Um, I'm surprised I'm actually allowed to go into knife stores, you know, and because when I go in there, I'm like, oh, I want that one. I like that one. And I don't need them. I don't need any more knives, you know, so... My wife said to me, I think it was for my 50th birthday, she said, oh, would you like that? Um, it's called a Kikwichi. It's a beautiful knife. It's like a $400 knife. I said, no, I don't need it. It's beautiful. And it would be an heirloom type of knife, a knife that I would pass down to my kids. Um, and some people will say, well, you know, I went to the store and, you know, this cost me 10 bucks, and it's going to cost you <clears> – <throat> nine dollars to sharpen it i'll tell them no it, it's not worth it you know i'm not going to put a ten dollar edge on a five dollar knife makes sense so i'm i'm pretty honest that way so but the the main thing and we can i could talk about this way too long is how you sharpen these knives so let's do you want to get going on that absolutely is there a knife that you can't sharpen or shouldn't sharpen Uh, the, the electric knives, the electric, um, oscillating knives. I can't do those. Um, okay. I can sharpen these, these knives. They're serrated knives and it's a, it's a trick that I do. And I don't tell you anyone how I do it. Uh, it's kind of a trade secret. Um, but I can make these knives, you know, like really better than new, sharper than new. And I hear it all the time. Uh, they'll say, and I say to everyone, be careful because if you go, well, I'm going to cut into that carrot how I used to before, um, you better be careful because you're just going to hold on to it and it's just going to glide through it. Because uh, the, the, the three-stage process that I do to sharpen it, it's incredibly smooth. And, mm -hmm. um, and it goes through product and potentially fingers if you're not really careful. Fantastic. Well, let's get okay. started with phase one then. Okay. And people say, you know, my, my staff make fun of me all the time and, and they'll say, how do you know that you bought this in October of 1988? These are the things that I remember. I don't know what it is. Maybe someone, they called me uh, savant-ish that I could remember all that, but uh, there's no way I'm not that smart. <laughs> okay. Okay. You see that one there? Yep. People say, oh, you know, I found my dad's or my my grandfather's stone out in the garage. And, you know, uh, he used to use oil on it. And it kind of smells like an old car or, you know, like a 1960 Chevy engine. Don't use these type of stones, in my opinion. Okay. okay? So these are, these are oil stones. And they make a mess. They're terrible. Uh, they're super aggressive, and they tear away metal. So this one here is probably, I think it's a, a 50 grit. And then this one here is, you know, maybe, um, I'm not sure about this one, maybe about 150 grit. So the lower the number, the more abrasive it is. Okay. So. And where is the where is the grit? Where can you find the grit if you're looking looking for it? A lot of times they'll have it on the stone itself. Okay. Like that. Uh, and really, the, the only thing that I recommend is these, you know, Japanese water stones. Uh, Lee Valley is the best place to get them. And, Valley, okay. and some people say, well, you know what? I want to sharpen my knives, but, you know, 
I don't really don't I don't want to do it for a long period of time, you know, because I, I want to be able to sharpen it, you know, in in about a minute, but have it like really sharp, you know, for a long period of time. You can't do it. Good to know, because that's I, honestly that's what everybody thinks. Uh, I've seen people who will, you know, do a fish fry and a couple waves past the the stone, and they think they're good to go. And you have showed me the error of those ways, and we're going to learn even more tonight on how to properly sharpen. And if we can't do it after tonight's presentation, I know a guy that we'll be able to send it to who will be able to do it properly for us. You know, the funny thing is, you know, people do send me, you know, their knives from uh, across Canada, even auger blades, they send it, uh, they send it to me. Um, am I the cheapest? No. Uh, am I, am I the, the, the fastest at doing it? Uh, time wise, does it take me 30 seconds to do a knife? Absolutely not. You know, it's like someone says, um, and I used to teach us in school, you know, how to sharpen your knives and students would say, yeah, this is, this is going to take a lot of time. I, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, it's like musky fishing, you know, saying I want to go out and I want to catch a musky on my first cast, maybe the second. You know, so that's almost the same thing as I want to know how to do sharpening knives, uh, but I don't want to spend a lot of time or money at it. Um, it totally depends on what you want to get out of it. Um, <clears throat> I don't have it with me because I think they're terrible. Um, it's a little handheld thing, and I think Rapala makes them, and you, you pull it through. And uh, it has two carbide blades, you know, like sticks on either side. Um, it'll feel sharp, but actually, you know, when you – actually, if you fill a walleye after pulling it through that, you're like, why is this dragging? You know, it, it feels like abrasive. What it's doing is either has a diamond or it has a carbide on the inside. And it actually tears away at the, the metal, and they're terrible. This, this is a steel – and this is a diamond steel. That's a very expensive steel that was given me to this by this company. Um, 2004, when I was in the World Olympics, Culinary Olympics, uh, they gave this to us. This is a beautiful steel. It actually tears away at the metal. So I never use this. Um, I just, I use it to show people that if you think, what is sharper, diamond or harder? Diamond or a regular steel? Well, it's diamond, right? So it's yeah. a diamond coated, and every single time, I won't even do it on this, every single time you hone this, you're tearing away at your uh, at your metal on your knife. So all of a sudden you'll go, what the heck happened to my knife here? Every single time you contact it, you're actually taking uh, metal away from, especially that very first contact, because that's the hardest that you're going to hit in that area. So... Okay. I never ever use diamond, you know, uh, steels. A diamond, a diamond stone. So this is a diamond plated. Uh, it's by DMT. It's a really good. It, it's an amazing stone. Okay. It's, big, it's wide. It's got a lot of surface area, and it's got two different grits on either side that you can take this up and flip it over. So if you take a look at this. And this for surface area. Big difference. This is what you want. This is what you want here. So if you compare, I'll move this. So if you have this here, let's take a look at this. And you're trying to sharpen this thing here on this tiny little stone compared to something like this that you can do almost the whole knife. Right. Make sense? Makes so sense. So the, these are, these are number one, they're terrible because they are an oil stone, but you have to like, you know, work in all different areas like this rather than, you know, working it almost together on one, in one section. So that's now, a 10 inch. Knife. It's an eight inch stone. So, you can get almost everything done, you know, on a very, very, uh, on a long, wide stone. Now, you don't think it's important to fasten your stone 
to, to something that's fixed in order to sharpen properly, or do you like the ability to move it around? Um, I do have something downstairs, and it's a water bath, and you can get it through Lee Valley as well. And okay. it actually suspends the stone in water. You can suspend it up till here, and it's got clamps. Um, on a really heavy stone, it does move around a little bit, and I've done it before when you're sharpening and, you know, something slips and it, it catches your fingers and, you know, you can get, you know, a really bad cut. I was sharpening on a, on a stone. I'll show you in a second. And my hands slipped and I went like that. Hey. You know, on these three fingers, I went like this, like that. Wasn't, uh, wasn't very pretty, but I never did it again. Great question. Peter's asking, do you need different stones for different types of knives? Okay, great question. Whose was that? Peter D'Souza. Peter, good question. So, you know, it's it, it, it has to go sort of in order. And I'm trying to I'm trying to give you guys as much information in a relatively short period of time. <clears throat> so now to establish an edge, you need something like this. And this is a, an 800 grit. You can use a 400 grit. Do not use a 200 grit because it'll tear away at your, at your knives really, really quick. Okay. So why do we do this one first? It is to establish the edge. Very good. Okay. So if I'm doing... This knife here, a chef knife, I'm going to do it to 20 degrees, and I'll show you in a second. So, lost my train of thought. So, okay, so I'm going to do it to 20 degree angle. And if I've got a different angle on here right now, and if I go to a 1200 grit, so this one here, I'm just basically almost polishing an old edge. Gotcha. Okay, so you need to establish and then um, whole, uh, uh, it's buffing. It's a buffing a little bit more. And then you have the, the second or the third stone that is going to buff it to a mirror finish. So people will say, well, well, I just went out to the store and I got a 4,000 grit stone. Is that good enough? Nope. Okay. Because, again, you're going to be buffing an old dull edge. So this is the, the, um, a 400 or an 800 to start. And then you can go to a 1200, you know, is good. So you're going up maybe 400 or 600 grit. And then you can go to a 4,000, this one right here. And then if you want, you can go to an 8,000. So the higher the number, the smoother the grit. And this, this is actually just like, it feels almost like paper. It's so smooth. So... Okay. These are all Japanese style. There's um, uh, Sun Tiger is really good. Uh, and I had my old stone like this. I had for almost 20 years. This is about 70 bucks. So for 20 years, you know, it's a pretty good investment. Wow. This 1200 here, that's roughly, you know, around $70. And, and then you go $80, you know, $120. So, but these... These are at least 20, 25 years old. Wow. And I just actually, if you could see it, I just, I trued it on my sander. It's a belt sander, a bench sander to make sure that it's, it's keeping flat. Uh, because when you're sharpening it, um, you have to keep moving it on the stone that you're, ch you're changing where you're, you're contacting it. Make sense? Makes sense. Now, the only thing that doesn't, and you know, again, I can eye things up pretty good, but how do you, how can you make sure that you're at the 20 degree angle that you're suggesting we need to be at to establish an edge? Okay. There's tools that you can use like this. <clears throat> and you can use a tool like this. Ah. This is a little bit of a cheat. It's okay. My wife is laughing. Okay, so then if I want, on this chef knife, I want 20 degrees. Okay. 
Bingo, bingo. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it over here. And basically, I can put it over here, and I can, I can measure the edge angle of how I want it. I, I don't like this. It's too cumbersome. So I go like this. That's 45 degrees, right? Yeah. you see that? Roughly, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, 90, yep. 45, yep. 20. Okay. Now, the, uh, and again, this, this takes time and practice. You're, you know, someone's not going to go to the store and go, oh, okay, well, I got these stones and I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to have a razor sharp edge. I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'm not going to, uh, it's going to be perfect. I know it because I saw it on, on CFN. <laughs> <laughs> And, and there, there are some videos, you can't see it. There's some videos out there that, and they're so corny for me. And they'll go like this, they go, and this is how you, I'll grab my crappy one. I'll grab it like this. So this is how you do it and you stand it and, and you go like this. It's terrible. So wh where's the damage? Right there. Yeah. And then, well, I think this is kind of my angle, you know, as I go like that. Mm -hmm. And I say the only thing that this is good for is right yeah. there. Yeah. The only oblique. good for the left angles. Yeah, the obliques, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. But, you know, I taught, you know, hundreds of people how to do this. And it's all about how you stand and it's hard to show you like this, but I line myself up with the stone. Okay. And then I go, if that's 45, now that's 20. So my finger right here is my gauge. Don't drag your finger on that stone because you're gonna wake up in the morning and go, where the hell is all my skin? Okay, <laughs> so you just wanna touch. So you know, on a knife like this, you're gonna be doing it I'll go like this in sections so you start on your tip and you go okay here's my angle this is a very porous stone so you got to soak this and uh and keep it in the water but really what it is is you can see this okay scott yeah, perfect so all you're going to be doing is you're going to be going in a back and forth motion like this and you're just going to be feeling you know what it's doing and then when you know the the pitch changes, oh, I need a little bit more water because this this will run through like a, a sponge because it's so porous. But all you want to do is you want to start off on your tip, and I'm going to put my fingers right over my tip, and then I find my angle. Is if it's only if it's 25 degrees or 22 degrees, is it still going to cut? Yeah, it'll cut. But remember, if you have this cutting through something right versus that cutting through something it's going to be uh, that much better now when so, you see the water Kevin, when you say water does this do you have an apparatus that that uh sprinkles water at all times so that the, the rock remains wet um when i'm doing it by hand here like this no yeah okay i can put it in a really nice baking pan like this of my wife's that I'm scratching, no. Yes. You can use a pan like this, but nothing else. So I've got a really nice pan like this downstairs under my machine, and my wife goes, oh, that's where that is. So don't take something that's really a nice baking pan. Anyways, if you soak it in water like this, it's gonna, it's gonna hydrate the, the knife. Um, Sometimes what I'll do is I'll have a little container of water and I'll just sort of splash it up as I'm going like this, splash it up. So you're constantly keeping it. Uh, the, the water is actually washing the debris of the stone and the, the steel. So it's not about temperature. You're not wetting the stone to try and keep the temperature down. No. Um, if you're going to go at this like a hundred miles an hour, you know, um, 
you'll heat it up a little bit. It would be actually more impressive to watch that. But um, no, you can, it, you're only going to heat it up if you're using a machine. But when you get into other stones like this one here, they will not have the water absorb into them because they're more porous and the water will stay on the top. You're saying uh, they're less porous, I would imagine, so the water wouldn't... Less porous, yes. Right. You're paying attention. That's what I like I'm about you. Trying. I'm trying, Cameron. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go back to this one here. And um, I'm trying to show people, you know, the very, very basics of, of this. And there is a video out there that I, actually I shot with Gord Pizer probably five years ago that I, I put up. Um, I hate watching my videos. You know, I, I, I think I watched it for maybe about 30 seconds and I cringed watching it. And, um, but the thing is, is you, you want to get, um, establish a new edge. Right. And how you do that on something like this is in sections and a knife, like a 10 inch knife. I'm going to do it in about four sections. Okay. So I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand lining up with my stone. And again, that's my 20 degree angle because it's just practice. Right. And I'm going to go in this section here. So one, two, three, four. And you could even do five like that. And then once you have, if you think that it's okay, wipe it off. Take a look at it and take a look at your edge. You know, do I have a consistent edge, you know, all the way along? If you have, then you go over to the other side. And so now this, your thumb, is your gauge. So if I go, okay, there's 45, there's 20, there's my thumb. My thumb is my gauge. Gotcha. You won't drag your thumb across that stone for a half hour. Makes okay, sense. so... I go, so I find my edge, and I'm going to go here, one, two, three, four, and then you can keep turning your stone, you can flip it over so you're wearing it properly. You can screw it on a, on a bench um, sander, a belt sander, you know those uh, bench ones, uh, and you can make it perfectly flat. So, but the, the best way that I can explain this is establish your edge. You know, on your your first stone, and every time you're going on one side like this, the steel is rolling over this side, and you go okay. to the other side, it's going to roll over this. And then you go to the next stone, and then it's going to be a little bit less. Next stone, a little bit less, and then you're ended. You're ending up with a perfect edge that is perfectly straight on both sides. So everyday use, you're using that knife every day, depending on what it is you're chopping or 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 dressing or what have you. Uh, how often and how much time would you spend to establish an edge like like you're demonstrating? Okay, great question. If you do it properly and you won't do it properly the first time, um, if I look at all of my knives, all of these, again, thirty. What is it? 35 years I've had this knife. I've, I've dinged the tip on it a couple times and I've gone back to the 400 grit. I've never gone back to the 400 grit once I've established that 20 degree angle. Oh, okay. Okay. No, it, it is not necessary. So if, you know, if you're, you know, chopping through bones and you damage it, yeah, you will have to go back to that one. But if it's just general, Knife use, you know, chopping vegetables or meats or whatever. Uh, you can go back and touch it up, you know, with with the, the 1200, with that one. Sometimes all I do is use the 4000 grit to get that edge sort of back. So your 400 to 800 grit is for newer knives or knives that are used a lot more frequently on obvious things that would dull it. Uh, like you, like you mentioned with bones, um, but if you have a knife that you're using every day to chop, you know, tomatoes or or stuff like you're you're suggesting, go to a higher grit stone right. to simply do maintenance work to the knife. Yeah. So uh, really, and even when I was um, really producing as as a chef, 
Um, and, and again, in I was working 12 hours a day and using my knives almost the whole day. I would only go back to basically a 4,000 grit, maybe twice a year. And that's high, high use. Um, but you have to take care of it. You don't, you, you don't toss it into the sink. You don't, you know, try to hack through things and you never lend your, your knives to anyone. As a chef, you never, it, my chef always said that lending your knife out is almost like lending out your girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no grit of stone that you can repair with that. Uh, right. Just a so, little bit. Yeah. In professional kitchens, you don't lend out your knives, you know, because okay. if you've got, you know, if you've got a $250 knife, it hits the ground. Someone was using it. And what do they say? Sorry. Yeah. You know, so a, a lot of knives, you know, they can be fixed. You know, if you break tips or stuff like that, uh, there's a certain way to, to repair them, yeah. but um, it, it's all about how you take care of them and, um, and, and be smart about it. You know, this one knife, where is it? It's right here. <laughs> I was in I was in cooking school, and I was in the meat cutting section. I remember it, and uh, and so I had this pork loin. And it was a bone in pork loin, and the bone head, you know, move was like, well, I'm just gonna like, you know, cut through this bone, and. I could probably still see it. I could still see the mark, yep, right there, of where I damaged it. And I said to my chef, you know, my instructor, I said, yeah, I, can you fix that? And he said, tried hacking through the bone, didn't you? And I said, yeah. And, and so he, he kind of fixed it for me. That was the only time I ever did that because knives don't go through bones, you know. Sense, hand, yeah. saws, hand saws, stuff like that go through bones. Knives don't. Makes sense. Uh, when sharpening a knife, uh, Tony's asking, "Do you is it a good idea to use protective gloves, or in your case, because you've been doing it for so long, it really doesn't warrant the need?" Yeah. So um, mesh knives, they're cumbersome. They they're slippery. Uh, they will they will help you if you slip for sure. Um, but for me, they just really get in the way. Uh, you can wear like a cotton glove, you know, for um, for sharpening as well. Um, sometimes I'll wear gloves like that if I'm doing, you know, a good amount of walleye or, or perch or, or whatever, you know, just so you don't get stuck. But um, no, no, I don't. Yeah. Professional butchers, you know, if they work in a in a plant, federally inspected plant or whatever, uh, proper HACCP or um, safety protocol they must wear a glove so their their cutting hand they don't have to but their their handling hand they must wear a glove uh and when you're in cold temperatures guess what that that mesh glove is two degrees as well on your hand and gotcha. it's terrible you know and um a good question so i've got a i've got an idea uh, you've got you've got your cuda fillet knife You've got your Rapala uh, fillet knife. You've gone to whatever store. Hopefully, it's a Mon Pa type shop because we want to uh, support local. Uh, but you you walk in, you buy your Rapala, you buy your Cuda knife. Do those knives come with an established edge when you purchase them? They do. Um, basic. It's a basic okay. knife. A basic edge. Um, Every knife, and that's a good question because I want to talk about this. Um, so every knife has a different angle on it. So a knife like this one here for skinning, that you're going uh, next to bone, through skin, through hair, this is a 25 degree angle. This one here, there's another one, 25 degree angle. So again, it's a more stouter edge, it's more resilient. You know, cutting through uh, next to bone, like this one here. This is a beautiful uh, knife. Uh, it's a Camulus. It's a Les Stroud series, and it's got the gut hook on there. Uh, very, very stout edge. Yeah. And, um, but if you look at a 
a filleting knife like this one here, you're not cutting through bone, you're not cutting through hair, and you want the, like really, really nice fillets. So this one here, 18 degrees. This one here, 20 degrees. This one here, uh, this one's uh, 25 degrees. So uh, Japanese knives, you know, some of them are a single bevel and some of them are a double bevel or a, a dual edge. So this one here is exactly the same as a North American edge um, okay. knife. It has two angles on it, one on this side, one on this side. Interesting. Some Japanese knives, they have a dual bevel as well. Some of them will only have one edge on one side and then perfectly flat on the other side. Ah. It took, I'm not making this up. It took me over 10 years and I don't have it here. I have it at work. It took me 10 years to sharpen that knife perfectly. Interesting. It's 17 degrees here and perfectly flat on that side. Wow. Uh, and there's, there's people in the city that will only send the knives to me uh, because they are super difficult to sharpen. I would imagine. Yeah. And they're a very, very hard steel. Wow. So I just purchased my Kuda knife. I come out of uh, my local mom and pa shop. Uh, I go to uh, a culinary store or some kind of kitchen store that I can purchase, um, say, a, you know, a 1200 grit uh, stone. I take my Kuda knife home. Can you give us a quick demonstration on how I would approach sharpening it so that I would be ready for the next fish fry? Sure. <clears throat> okay. So what I do is I'm going to grab one second. Tell a joke. And guys, if you are looking perhaps uh, to have your knives sharpened by a professional like Cameron, uh, here's a shameless plug. This is the name of his company. It's called the Razor's Edge. Uh, you can contact uh, Cameron via Messenger or text or Facebook or what have you. Uh, but uh, he accepts knives. He will sharpen knives. And as you are finding out tonight, he knows a lot more about sharpening knives than most of us do. So um, trust your stuff. Trust your soft and hard steel with a man that knows. All right, Cameron. Okay, so again, it's all about. Oh, look at that! Isn't she nice? Give me some water. Oh, roots better. I don't know what I had. I had, I had some chicken soup uh, that Sandy made, which was really nice. And of course, I put a little bit of hot sauce in there. And it was about fifteen minutes before I went on, and it, it just sort of like you know, like down the wrong hole. Type of thing, and I'm here. I am spitting up soup uh, on the couch, and uh, and then I'm like, oh, great! I got to go on in five minutes now. So, well, look, I don't want I don't want to get graphic, but usually before broadcasts, I don't use the hot sauce for the simple fact that it's not the hole that it's going down that I'm more concerned about. Yeah, it's, in and out. Yeah. Okay, so um, again, it, it depends if you if you're okay with getting you know a little pull through you know, knife uh, sharpener and, you know, if that take, gives it a little bit of an edge, that's fine. Um, this one here, it's a steel, you know, you can just quickly use a steel, you know, to hone it, but it's not to sharpen it. It's only to hone the edge. So again, you know, I'm, I'm sharpening it at basically the same angle that I sharpen it on the stone. You know, okay, and so I'm glad I'm so glad you brought that up, Cameron, because they have those, as you said, right beside where you purchase your CUDA knives is some of those V sharpeners uh, that you can run through. Uh, of course, you know, I don't know what grit stone wheels they have on them or even the, the V edge. Do you recommend those for sharpening knives or simply for establishing an edge? Um. A lot of those, you know, if, if people think that, oh, I'm going to take this thing and, you know, and if it's got like grooves like this, um, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to pull it through like this and I'm going to have a razor sharp edge. You won't. It's what it is, is it's actually tearing again. It's tearing away at the, the metal and it's giving like a really rough edge. And the most 
interesting thing is there was a, a student that was doing the knives, uh, sharpening it on the stone, old fashioned way. And on the weekend he, he did it and he was working hard at it, super dedicated. And he came on the Monday and he was in another class and I walked over to his knives and I said, so how'd it go? And he goes, really good. And I said, and I picked it up and I went, use a diamond steel, didn't you? He goes, yeah, how can you tell? And I said, it's rough. So I went like this. So as I pulled it across my thumbnail, it's like I'm dragging it through sandpaper. Wow. So I said, so you did the 400 grit and then the 1,000, then the 4,000, and then the 6,000 grit, right? And he goes, yeah. I said, and then you picked up your, your diamond steel and then you ruined it by doing that. He goes, oh. When I went to the store, they said that this diamond steel is the best thing ever. Uh, you don't need it. Um, and when you're actually cutting, you could even cut through carrots or onions or whatever using a diamond steel or a pull through one of those ceramic or a diamond steels. And then you're like, why do I feel like I'm cutting in sand? Like it's rough. So all of my knives, you know, if I feel it, I can't feel any nicks. They're, they're perfectly smooth. Um, and that, that just, the way I, I do it as a professional, uh, yeah, I, I do it, you know, uh, more than someone just going, oh, I'm, I'm sharpening my knife and then the, that's good. So. Well, to be honest with you, Cameron, the whole reason we did this was for the simple reason that a lot of us just don't know. Uh, you know, we buy these gimmicks like Peter's mentioning. Uh, you know, and it does. It'll sharpen your knife periodically. It won't last very long, mind you. And we don't maybe understand the harm that we're doing to the metal itself. So, you know, this is exactly why we did this tonight. And uh, you're doing a fantastic job showing us the error of our ways. So it's fish fry time. We've got a live well full of walleye, let's just say. And we've got our coda knife, but we want to make sure that it's going to glide through and uh, do what it's supposed to do, or at least what it's designed to do. And you're going to show us the how we could get our knife ready so that it's going to perform the way we need it to perform. Yeah. So I'm just modifying things just a little bit here. Um, I would soak this stone for a half hour before, make sure that it's all the water is completely in there. And again, it's like a sponge. So if you take a look at it right now, it's sort of absorbed in and through. Yeah. But um, if you soak it, I didn't want to make a mess on the counter here, but anyways. So all you want to do is you just got to relax and try to use as much of the stone as possible. And again, you're going to start off on the tip. And I always start off on the same side. I always start on the right side, um, every single knife that I sharpen. Okay. As I'm as I'm starting, you choke up, you choke up on the handle as much as you can, and using your index finger and every single, you know, middle finger and thumb and finger has a certain place on the stone, and it's it's trust me, it's super hard for me to show you that everyone this you know, just in this kind of medium. So give me a little more time. So all you want to do really is relax, you know, and all you want to do is in a nice back and forth motion, don't push down super hard because if you've got a soft steel and an aggressive stone, you know, very, very quickly you're going to go, oh, geez, where's my, uh, where's my knife? Okay. <laughs> Back and forth. And you see now it's it's actually keeping more water in it. And that's just me just pouring it over top. Gotcha. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in sections. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. That's a little bit difficult in this pan, you know, like here. So all mm -hmm. I'm gonna do is go back and forth. Just like that. And you know, if you do it. Quite, a, quite often or quite a bit, just turn it around. And I like to buy stones that are only solid. Some have half, half a 2,000, half 4,000. When this one wears out, then your stone's semi gone, right? 
So as, as I'm going along, I'm going to go for my tip. And if I go like 20 strokes here, and I move down a little bit, you can do 20 strokes here. I move down, 20 here. And then the really important thing is you're going to take a cloth, and then you're going to wipe it off, and then you're going to look at the edge. You know, what have I done? <laughs> Boy, she's awesome. I was just going to say, we're using pans we're not supposed to. We're making a mess yeah. of the counter, and she's feeding you cloth that we're probably not supposed to be using either, I tell you. Sandy, you are a trooper. She is a gem. I'm so lucky. So once you have, you know, the, you know, what you think that is maybe uh, sharp on this side, then you're going to flip it over and go on the other side. Okay. Uh, some people will go like this. Don't do that. Don't go like this. <laughs> this is the one that I like. Woo, you know, like this. You know, no, it's you need to have contact and concentrate and almost look right over the stone. So straight back and forth, not like the tiny circles that you're you're suggesting. Same number of even strokes on on either section of the knife as well as on both sides. So if you do twenty strokes one side, flip it over, do twenty strokes on the other. Correct. And, you know, it's, like I said, it, you can look on videos and some sharpening, nice sharpening videos, they've got like 10, 20 million views on these. It's crazy. And some of them, I'm, I, I look at them and I go, no, that's so <laughs> bad. <laughs> but who cares? So, no, right. and like this one, this one's terrible. It's, you'll never have the same angle from here to here. It's impossible. But if you go like this and you go flat, 20 degrees, flat, 20, that's my angle. And I'm not going to change it, you know, from here. My wrist right here, you see that? My wrist will not change. Gotcha. It's hard. Can you see my wrist there? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So once I start here at that angle, yeah. my my uh, wrist will not change. Gotcha. So I'm going to go here, 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 and then down to the, the heel like right there. Then I'm going to take it, flip it over. Now the finger, my finger is going to go on this side. When I'm on this side, I'm pushing down. That's that's hard to show there. <clears throat> okay, so on this one, I'm using my thumb to push down this way to have my angle the same and not change. Gotcha. And when I flip over, now I'm using my finger right here to push this way. Does that make sense? Makes sense? Yeah, makes perfect okay. sense. So now I'm going to go, you know, start off on my tip. And again, my thumb... If I go flat, 20 degrees, and it's just touching, that's my gauge right there. That's mm -hmm. my gauge. And, you know, the Lee Valley does sell, uh, like, clip-on, you know, things, you know, that you can set your angle and stuff like that. They're okay. I think they get in the way. But it might establish, you know, the right angle. And that's the hardest thing is to have the, the right angle from here all the way down to here. And I can look at people's uh, knives and I'll go, oh, there's one angle, there's another angle, there's another angle, uh, four different angles on one section of the knife. Right. Now, when, so, you get a, when you get a knife like that, can you fix it with the, the various angles or do you then go back to the 400 or 800 grit and reestablish uh, the whole blade? You have to start over. Uh, any yeah. knife that is brought to me, I go right to basically uh, the 400, and I go to 1,000, and then I go to the 4,000. Right on. Every, every single knife that I do. And even if I've sharpened, uh, <clears throat> if I've sharpened it before um, for customers, I'll still go back and just make sure that it's a perfect edge. I look for any uh, dings or, or, you know, it's been dropped, and I'll fix that. Um, but for me, like I'll just go back to my 4,000 or 8,000 to touch up the edge. Um, <clears throat> but really, 
uh, it, it's about um, understanding what angle to use for what knife. Gotcha. And, and that's, um, and like I said before, this is hard for me to kind of show this here uh, for something that I've, I've been doing for a very, very long time uh, to show to people or to try to educate people, Hey, take some time, you know, just, you know, maybe even just buy two stones and play around with it. Um, the electric ones, you know, Cabela sells and Bass Pro and other places. And it's like two spinning wheels, sandpaper and stuff like that. And you put it through from the second that you hit that it's tearing off metal. And um, there was a trade show that I was in a couple of years ago. And this guy, he was a bit of a jerk. And he goes, well, I don't know what's so special about that. You know, it's just the same on a grinder. And I said, well, no, it's not. And, uh, and he goes, well, yeah, it's, you know, the grinder doesn't heat up the metal. And I said, this is actually in a water bath, a cold water bath. And it's spinning at maybe one fiftieth of, of or a one one hundredth of what a grinder is spinning at. Right. And he told well, us the same thing. So I'm like, you're right. Yeah. Have a great day. Uh, yeah. Have a good day. day. Have, um, have a wonderful day and, and enjoy your your knife uh, in 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 the many pieces that I'm sure it's going to be in. Um, obviously, you get folks um, that will drive up and down the street, ring a bell, and they have a grinder, you know, on a truck. Uh, that people will bring in lawnmower blades and knives and all, all court, you know, all kinds of things, scissors, you name it. And to me, I'm thinking now I, I'm doing, I'm not necessarily doing a disservice to my knife uh, by taking it to that gentleman, but at least he's establishing some kind of angle, some kind of, um, you know, beginning, if you will. And then I can get into a finer grit. Uh, stone in order to perfect it. Would you agree or disagree? Okay. Um, I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five machines and there are water stones. Uh, actually, one, two, four are water stone machines. And then I've got, um, I've got two buffers and then another machine. They do not travel well at all. Okay. Uh, my one machine... You know, it was a couple thousand dollars. The, the the Japanese stone that I have for the one machine is $750. It does not travel very well, you know. And even, you know, we've gone to shows, say, in the late, late fall. Uh, if the cold weather gets to them, they'll crack, you know, just Ooh. like that. So um, the machines that I use and then the, the, the what I do by hand um, – yeah, it's it's very very precise. Some of the machines that they have, they do have guides, you know, that they can feed through, uh, you know, and and uh, gauge the angle. Uh, but I'll send you a picture actually tonight, and you can maybe take a look at the guy just sent it to me just before we went on air, just as I was spitting up the soup, you know, over there. Okay. <laughs> With the hot sauce. And, That's hilarious. and That's he, hilarious. he said, this is what I got. And I said, yeah, I, I know. I, I know who it's from. And it actually, it ground up the side of his knife. You know, it wasn't this. It wasn't this part of the knife that was sharpened. He went all the way up here. Ooh. And that's where... And I'm not saying anything bad about the, the mobile guys. Some of them are really great. But if you go like this, I think this is the angle. One, uh, two. And when you do it, sort of a hand, you know, sort of an eyeball like that on a very, very high-speed machine, you're going to do damage. And um, for mine, my machine, it spins like this. Gotcha. And it sits in a water bath. And again, once I get everything on here and I set my angle and everything, you know, on here, how, what I want, even if I want a half a degree, if I want a 17.5 degree angle on this, I can do it. Um, and some people will say, well, your machine, this one guy, well, that machine is the same as like a, a $10 thing that I got at Canadian Tire, you know, like a, you know, pull through like this. 
No, no, I don't think so. But uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Now, in terms of angles, um, obviously there are different angles for different knives. How would one determine what the angle should be that they're sharpening a specific knife? How do you find that out? So you can Google, even if you go um, <clears throat> Shun. If you go Shun, good old Google, um, what angle should I sharpen my Shun knife at? You know, it'll tell you right from the factory, you know, that uh, a 17 degree angle is perfect. Um, everything, not everything that you, you read on Google is, is right. I know that's a shock, but Typically, if you go to if you go to the Camulus website, uh, or if you just Google Camulus um, sharpening angle, uh, it'll it'll tell you. And a lot of them are very very close to how it should be. Um, but anything that is more aggressive and, and cutting through things, uh, again, as a rule, twenty five degrees, twenty degrees, like that, and then. And this is just me and filleting 17, 18 degrees because, and I was going to say this earlier, we want it, when you're filleting something, you want the least amount of resistance right. going through the fish. Right. With meat, and this is, this is called the butcher hold, you know, and you're cutting around bones and, and hip and, and stuff like that. This is a more of a, an aggressive thing because you're cut, 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 you know, cut around the bones, this, this, this. When you're filleting fish, you want this. Cut, cut, like that, right? You don't want to be like, you know, like sawing like this. And, you know, because when you look at the fillet after, you want to go, that is, that is beautiful. That's yeah. perfect fillet. And you can see, you, know, you can't even see the knife cuts. So that's where, if you have a knife like this, the least amount of uh, angle on it to cut through your, whatever you're cutting. Makes sense. Yeah. But that being said, um, it's easily damaged, you know, if you're cutting through things that you should not be. A 17 degree angle, you know, or a 12 degree angle, that edge is so, so fine compared to something like that, right? Makes sense. Yeah. So the resiliency of a 25 degree angle like this is way more than something that is, you know, like 15 degree angle. Makes but sense. But a 15 degree angle filleting fish or stuff like that is amazing. Right on. Uh, a couple questions here. Richard Dunlop is asking, what is your opinion on the Kuko or Cutco knife? What? Yeah, the Cutco is is good, and, and people that try them, they swear by them. Uh, okay. A lot of them, they have the expanding blade that you can uh, pull yeah. out. Some of them have like a built-in uh, sort of fish grip feature. Uh, it's not the hardest steel out there. Um, sort of, a, for me, it's the middle of the, the range um, knife. It's not the, it's definitely not the hardest steel. Uh, they do offer, I think, lifetime sharpening on them, um, but yeah, they're okay. Good to know. Uh, in terms of sharpening, uh, Tony's asking, have you ever used the Speedy Sharp from Canadian Tire? <laughs> nope. Was it, is there an <laughs> LOL behind that? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I people ask me that you know all the time, like, is is the this sharp sharpener thing you know the same as what you do? No, it, it's not even close. And 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 I've told people before I'm not the cheapest. Um, my turnaround time is is qu pretty quick. But this don't get me wrong. This is not me selling my business at all. I, no. I just like teaching people you know how yeah. to do things you know how to sharpen knives. Um, when people say, well, I, I want to learn how to do that, but I, I don't really want to do, I don't want to put a lot of time or money into it, don't do it. Amen. Because you'll, you'll try it once and you're like, yeah, I like this pulling through a lot better than, you know, doing this. And um, yeah, 
So it just depends on how much you want or how good you want your knives. Make and sure. as and I, I wanted to say this earlier, as a chef, if your knives are not razor sharp, you know, in a lot of kitchens, you're bringing you bring shame to the profession. If you can't cut an onion perfectly, or slice carrot, or um, or, or do really really fine work, perfect work, um, in some kitchens they'll call you a cook. Okay. You know what I mean? I do get. If, I you're, get if you're a chef and you're working in a in an upscale you know kitchen wherever it is. And if you don't have a really sharp knife, they'll call you a cook. I will never. I'd rather be called a guest or, or <laughs> um, you know, someone that uh, enjoys being at a restaurant than necessarily cooking what it is that uh, our patrons are eating. Gord Fraser, yes, the uh, angle that uh, Cameron has mentioned is 17 degrees. Uh, Sean Forche wants to know, is there... Anything that you can advise when it comes to ceramic knives or painted knives when it comes to sharpening? Painted knives? Yeah. Um, okay, so there's some companies, uh, I think at Superstore sell those. Uh, I know Ikea sells them. The painted knives are fine because what you're doing is you're taking off a very small portion of the paint. Um, it's It doesn't flake off. It's baked on. Um they're actually, they're okay. Um, again, if you, for, and this is coming from a chef, if you go, well, there's a $10 knife here and you know, yeah, there's a hundred dollar knife over here as a professional, I'll pick the hundred dollar knife almost all the time because I know I'm going to use it for a long time. And again, this one here, uh, $90. And that was 34 years ago, 35 mm -hmm. years ago. So other knives, mm, like this one here, you know, that's, um, yeah, it's about $90. And that was um, 17 years ago. You know, I, I got that one. If you take care of your knives, you'll have them for your whole life. You know, mm -hmm. and so knives like this one here, um, I call them sort of like weed diggers, you know, or, you know, that really tiny screw, you know, that you want to, or, you know, to clean out from your stove, you know, scrape a little bit, you know, so that's kind of what I, I think those are okay for. So the multi-purpose knife. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and Christina, of course, you, you're sort of touched on it. So knives have uh, a very long longevity as long as you look after them. The typical kitchen knife. Uh, how how often should you re be replacing those knives? Replacing them? Yeah. Um, ideally, you want to have, you know, like a kitchen knife, you know, like your whole life, you know. You um, that's a good question. Um, it just depends on, on how, how good you want your your – no, that's not the right word. How effortless do you want your your cutting and your slicing, you know, stuff like that to be? If and I, I say this to my clients all the time, how was the knife when you used it? And they said, Oh my God, I love from the moment that I picked that knife up, I was so excited to cut or to use it the next time versus uh, I guess I gotta use this dumb thing, you know, and uh, it can't cut anything. So I, I hear it all the time. I can't wait to use this again. So that's, th that's the big difference. Now, uh, yes, Tony, you can get smaller versions of the 1200 grit stone. I do know that. Uh, I see them all the time. Uh, when, you know, when my kids were playing hockey, they used to have those stones so that they could get an edge back on their skates. So they do exist uh is would you recommend buying those smaller stones at the same place as you buy the large ones cameron for for me not at all okay. uh, again you you want to have the most amount of surface area here again so this is like a, an eight inch stone if i'm sharpening an eight inch knife 
this is going to be super simple. And if it's half the size, again, you're, you're, you're going to be wearing down this little piece here way faster, three times faster, you know, than you would be if you're using a stone like this. So bring a larger stone is what Cameron's telling you to do, Tony. Uh, I know it's cumbersome, but uh, by the sounds of it, it's going to pay off in the long run when it comes to the lifetime of your knife. And if you are, and if it's cold, and if you're taking these out anywhere, like they will crack, you know, so uh, they, they don't travel well, but I just keep these in my basement, in my workshop area. Um, and if I'm doing a lot of stones, yeah, I'll, I'll keep these stones soaked and I'll just line them up and then just bang, bang, bang. And if I've got a lot of knives, I'll use my, my machines, uh, in which I use a lot. Um, it just depends on, you know, how much you want to really get into it and, and have a really a great knife that you want to pick up. And some people, it is, it is not important at all. Makes sense. No, absolutely. Uh, Gord Fraser's asking a great question, and I'm I'm assuming that you might do the odd class, but uh, do you have classes, or do you have any links on your YouTube channel that you'd be able to share with people? No. Um, it's funny. There was a guy in the fall, and he contacted me, and he said, I I'm thinking of starting up my own business, like knife sharpening. What do I do? And I said, and I talked to him, I think, for almost two hours uh, of what I did and what I would change and, and this is what to buy and don't buy this. Um, but for online classes, honestly, I, I never, ever thought of it. It's never come across my mind. Um, I'm pretty busy with a lot of things, so I don't even know if I would even want to commit to, you know, another thing, uh, you know, an online class or whatever, but it's interesting. You know, it's, um, it's a good, it's a good avenue for teaching people, you know, uh, getting a little bit more involved, you know, rather than this, because I'm kind of restrained, you know, by, you know, um, trying to teach here. No, absolutely. Makes sense. So Gord, uh, I invite you to go back and watch this presentation right from the beginning. Uh, Cameron goes over in great detail a lot of the knives that you see selected in front of them and some of the uses of which stone to use for what when it comes to sharpening and establishing angles. Um, great, great content as always, Cameron. Uh, but I do if believe... If anyone wants, if they just sort of go on YouTube, and like I said, I think it's six years old uh, that Gord and I... Gord was really enthralled of knives and sharpening and, and he said well why don't we do um, a youtube video so <clears throat> we we were going out lake trout fishing and and we were doing an in fisherman uh, uh piece and so uh the night before he said okay let's let's shoot this video on how to sharpen your knives and it's i think it's about 35 minutes long but it does go through each step of what to do and it's not in a professional studio or anything or professional lighting or audio <clears throat> but it does teach the basics and what to buy and 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 um, how to check you know if your knife is sharp at this stage and at this stage and at this stage i and i see it all the time people are like okay yeah that should be good right and i'm like Anything that you do from this point on, if you go to another stone, you're completely wasting your time. Good to know. Because you haven't you haven't really established your first edge. And if you don't do your first edge, you're just wasting, you know, your time and your knife and your stone, you know, after that. Is there a good way to test that you have a good edge? Like would you bring along a tomato or a piece of paper and do a cut to determine that you're getting the kind of sharpness and angle that you're looking for. That's what I do. And you, you hope, Oh, you, so you do this and if hair follicles fall off, you know, it's what you want. Yeah. And people will do um, a, a paper and I've never done the paper. If I go on my arm like this, it's hard to see. And if I can just shave, 
a very small piece of my uh, hair like that, yeah. I know that it is absolutely razor sharp. Um, yeah, tomato, onion, uh, whatever. Um, I've been able to take a tomato, go like this, put a tomato down, and I put my knife, and I actually hold on to it like this, and I just sort of pull the knife back like that. And if it'll go through the tomato, you know that it's pretty sharp. Makes sense. Now, I know you were dreaming up of a way of doing a giveaway for us. We're at the almost at the one and a half hour mark. Um, I'm not sure how you're going to do a giveaway, but uh, I'm going to leave this to you. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, put, I know we talked about this before, putting me on the spot. Um, well, I didn't I mean know. to. I, sorry, Cameron, I didn't mean to, but uh, if you want, I could perhaps come up with one in its place if you wish. Yeah, let's, and I apologize. I know I brought that up earlier. Um, today is actually my my fiscal year end, you know, of inventory. Uh, the last couple, three days, you know, I've been putting 12-hour days, you know, for counting all of the uh, food and everything from our horrible COVID year. Um, so, but anyways, I, I was going to try to get something, but it's um, life. I think we talked about that before. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is right here, our bait to go outdoor flavors. We're going to put a Scotty pack for you together. And what the question is going to be, I'm going to leave up to Cameron uh, to tell you right now. Okay. Um, oh, it is a good one. For people that were listening right from the start, how about this? When did I buy this knife? Perfect. How about that? There you go. Fantastic. So leave your answer in the comments. Everyone who guesses correct will be put on a wheel. And uh, next Monday, uh, we will spin the wheel and find out who wins the Bait to Go Outdoor Flavors Scotty Pack. Cameron, as always, my friend, you're a wealth of knowledge. And you taught us a lot about uh, sharpening knives, what knives that we should be looking for, uh, for, you know, obviously... Uh, different applications. Um, look forward to you coming back for another cooking segment. Um, yeah. Do you have any recipes that are coming up in the near future that you wanted to share or you want to keep them a surprise? Uh, what did I do for Big Jim's magazine shoot? Um, I, sent that, I sent that a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it is. I've actually got, if you saw last Last week, I, I'm doing a, a white fish and bacon burger for Outdoor Canada. I'll be shooting that this weekend, and that'll be coming out in the spring issue. Um, the next issue of Outdoor Canada, we've got a shrimp and goose gumbo that I did. It was right. delicious. Uh, try that one. Um, what else? Um, yeah, it's. I'm trying to mix all these things in with work and my business and. And uh, recipes, you know, for magazines. Uh, I actually did uh, a recipe and articles for In Fisherman. Uh, it depends on when they're going to fit those in. Um, I can tell you that there's one on uh, outdoor cooking, and the other one is the top five portable stoves. You don't want to miss that one. That it's, uh, awesome. it's amazing. I tried all these different kinds of portable stoves you know, for cooking in the outdoors. And there is some cool stuff out there, let me tell you. Fantastic. But, uh, but before we go, I just want to say that um, uh, I, I'm really passionate about a lot of things, and knives absolutely is one of them. I just like to teach. That's it. And this has nothing to do with anything else. It doesn't have to do anything with CUDA or my business or none of that. It's just teaching the CFN community. Well, we really appreciate it, and uh, a lot of people were listening because they have the right year uh, posted already in the comments, uh, and I invite you, as I said, Outdoor Flavors, Scotty Pack will be yours if we spin your name on the wheel next Monday, uh, but we're looking for the year that that knife was purchased in. You want to just hold it up again, Cameron, before we go? What this year? Relic. This is, uh, yeah, I... I cut a lot of things on this knife, and I thought it was the best knife in the world. 
until I bought my second knife. I'm like, this thing's terrible. You know, so uh, anyways, but it's I'll always have it my entire life because that's where my whole career started right here. Well, appreciate it, Cameron. Sandy, thanks so much for all your work behind the scenes. And hopefully Cameron cleans up the mess and does the laundry. Yes. <laughs> right on. In the meantime, guys, if you are looking to have your knife uh, sharpened by a professional, and I know this is not what this segment was about, but I will invite you to reach out to Cameron. As mentioned before, it's called the Razor's Edge. And uh, if you are looking to get that knife the way you want it and you know the way it can be performed, uh, reach out to Cameron and he will make sure that it's done for you correctly. Until next time, Cameron, thanks so much, buddy. You, you stay safe and stay classy, my friend. Okay. Peace. All the best.